All right, ready? I love that song. Make me think of the Hornets game every time I see that song. Cause you look, oh, the, I just want to rock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause you look up and like you know it'd be thousands of people at the arena. All of a sudden, all the little kids start jumping up and start like rocking the shit. I mean, the first time I said, I was like, "The hell is happening here?" I didn't know it was a dance to it. <laughs> all right, here we go. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Black Outers Podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Joining is always by my co-host, Karen. And we're live on a Monday, ready to do some podcasting. Find us wherever you get podcasts. Search the Black Outers will come up. Leave us five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate those. We love those. We like those. Just make sure they're nice. Um, the official weapon of the show is a Taser. An unofficial sport. Bullet ball. A bullet ball extreme, extreme, extreme. Um, and I mean, honestly, it's just kind of going a random episode. We don't really have any specific things to talk about. Mm-mm. You know, I like to, uh, uh, get into the randomness of life, but I feel like, you know, it's a lot of hot topics that people have been talking about. So we're going to take this musical interlude. So I know where to put the commercials and then we're going to come right back and we're going to, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about all the controversial topics. All right. Let's talk about it, Karen. The internet has been going off. And I feel like it happened right after we stopped doing shows last week. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> we haven't had time to talk about it. Okay. I was about to say, what just happened? Kiki Palmer boyfriend became Black Twitter's number one enemy after publicly shaming her sexy outfit. Never know that nigga's ass. Have you heard about this story, Karen? I don't really know what happened. All I know is like they been on his ass. I was like, that nigga said something about her. It's a <laughs> lot of moving parts and it's been messy. And I've been watching all the takes on social media and they're almost all bad, but mostly because um it's you're capped at 140 characters. Right. Well, we have a podcast and we can talk about this shit as long as we want to. <laughs> as long as we want to. From as many angles as we want to, and nobody can stop us and nobody can do a damn thing about it. Um, well, first of all, did you know Kiki Palmer had a boyfriend? Now, I did know that. Okay. Now, not trying funny. What did it look like and who he was? Didn't give a fuck. You just I knew know. she had a boyfriend. Yeah, because she had a baby. I knew she baby. had a baby. Yeah, she had a baby. I didn't know if she was married, uh, had a husband, oh. boyfriend. I had never heard of this nigga. I and, never heard of him. I didn't think yeah. she was married, so I figured out it was probably her and her boyfriend probably had a baby together because I have seen she was on um uh the Terrell show the YouTube dude mm-hmm. and uh she was on there she was talking about him but mm-hmm. I still didn't know who he was I was like oh that's her boyfriend and she they was with they had a baby I together. have no idea who the Terrell person is on YouTube if that's even a, a, a real name because Karen just ah! doesn't know those things but um so I didn't know. I, I figured she might have had a boyfriend because she had the baby. And and she had the baby and nobody was publicly shaming her. Uh, so I was like, she must be attached to a man of some sort. Because normally, you know, you, a single mom, yeah, uh, famous or not, if she black, she going to catch hell for being a single mom with, with, without a, without us knowing who the man is. Anyway, um, it's this guy's name, Darius Jackson. And he has a somewhat famous brother, Sadrunus Jackson, or Sadrunus. He played Dro on uh, Insecure. I remember that nigga. Yeah. So that's his brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he kind of, you know, I guess has a resemblance to his brother. Um, so Darius Jackson uh, was on Twitter like the rest of us in, the, the, in these washed times. <laughs> and there was a video going viral on Twitter. It was Usher who's has a who has a residency in Vegas. Yes, he has a real and, and the thing is, I've been hearing about it. 
and me and your mom was talking about it. And everybody who has been to the shows say it is a great time. They was like, it is such a ball uh, to go. I hope he continues to see him because I would like to go to one one day. Me and your mama. That you know that that's yeah that's that's cool. I was um this is a total tangent. Maybe let me write this down so I remember to get back. Side guys on a little high. Let me write this down so I remember to get back to it. But okay. Uh, yeah, Usher and old R and B. Okay, coming back to that. Okay, but so he was Usher has his residency in Vegas. Mm-hmm. It seems to me they like famous and rich black people or Usher fans come there and there's a section where it seems like they can sit. Now, I don't know if that's like a, if you're a famous person, he might comp your ticket and you get to sit in VIP or, and if that's part of the promotion is, you know, these famous women coming or if it's just rich, famous black women that just like, I I can afford to sit here and I love me some Usher. I got, I got, I got the extra guap and I'm going to sit here. Right. But whatever he does, whatever happens, if he spots one of these like famous women in the front row in that section he'll bring her up on stage and he'll serenade her he'll sing Aww. to her um and <clears throat> he's done this before with other famous black women um it's it's gone viral before but yeah, he's he, mm, he done Issa Rae and like you said yeah other Issa very, Rae very Saweetie people. um and but but Kiki goes up there and she is dancing um, and out or being serenaded and she's wearing kind of like a lacy see-through bottom uh, dress where you can see she has a thong on. Um, Honey, yeah, she got that body. She had that baby. Her body said boom. And she's like, oh, y'all going to get this. So here it and is. I don't blame her. Uh, YouTube won't take us all the way down just because a little bit of sound is playing. But uh, if y'all can see like. See, so if you've been following the quote unquote evolution of Kiki Palmer, um, Kiki Palmer, you know, I feel like was America's sweetheart, mm-hmm. America's darling. That is how people when were. When she and Akili and the B, Akili and the B, but yeah. also, but I'm not, I'm saying even recently, like mm-hmm. a, less than six months ago, a year ago, we wanted her to be on the morning shows. Uh, to to like, we need Kiki Palmer to be hosting America. Good morning, America. Yeah, she actually has done a show like before, so she got experience. That, and there was a movement to actually get her on like one of those shows because that's how charming and how much we think she's household appropriate and everything. Um, and I think for the most part, we've been seeing her as Akila and the B. We've been seeing her as Lil Kiki, you know. Um, even though like he, she was in um that movie with J Lo Hustlers and mm. playing a stripper, and even then people was like, Oh, she got body, but then it was like, but but for real, that's still our little sweet that's America's niece, you know. Um, which I think a lot of times when you talk about people that were stars as children, right? She they're always gonna have yeah, it's just because you were always given the adorable role and the cute spunky and all this shit. A lot of those kids grow up and they kind of like go the opposite way where it's like, I want my time in the, the in the sun to be seen as a sexual symbol and all this stuff. Um, but anyway, so as you can see from this uh this dance, he's just singing, he's got his arm around her, uh back in an appropriate, like like he even has like a his coat between her and him. Um and then he let like he lets her sing a little bit. <laughs> Everyone's having fun. Her girls are having fun. Yeah, this sounds like that's the section. Right. And then he looked, he looks like at a like she turns and lets him look at her butt and she he looks at it and keeps singing. Yeah, he probably do this to everybody. Yeah, and it and like I've I can't like I don't know if it's like part of the promotion of the tour because or the, the residency. Right. Because it's like these things have happened multiple times. Or if it's just like a, a, a actual, you know, um, like just organic moment. Yes, you know? and they look like they're having a ball. They look like they're having a blast. They probably have worked with each other or at least know each other. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like they're quote unquote strangers to each other. They've both been in some form of the industry across each other's paths. Also, like Kiki is a black woman of a certain age. She has a crush on Usher like every Bye. fucking black woman Come of a certain on. age. 
got a crush on Usher. Like it's like um that's not like that's not crazy or whatever. Like and that's probably and, why some people go. Absolutely, yes. and it's cute and it's fun and and the audience sees it it's in front of everybody, you know. Um, and so it it was adorable, so it went viral. But then uh, her boyfriend, uh, Mr. Uh, Jackson, um, he put on Twitter a quote tweet of her with the picture and said, "It's the outfit, though. You a mom." Mm. And uh, that did not go over well with people. Mm-mm. The fuck that got to do with anything. And at first, it didn't go over well with people just because they just thought it was a bad opinion. Mm-hmm. But then it really didn't go over well once people realized that's the father of her child and he had this opinion, you know. Um, then he replied, we live in a generation where a man of, of the family doesn't want the wife and mother of his kids to showcase booty cheeks to please others. And he gets told how much of a hater he is. This is my family and my representation. I have standards and morals to what I believe. I rest my case. Um, and uh, that didn't really help to uh, end it. <laughs> uh, he, he rested his case, but the case did not rest with him. Okay. Mm-hmm. They've been on his case uh, since then. He, he actually deleted his Twitter and came back, which because at first I thought maybe he was trolling. But when he deleted his Twitter and came back, I said, oh, no, he meant that because you only delete that Twitter account when you and your feelings and some of the shit people been saying is connecting with you. Um, But, you know, to take it full circle or to try to put it in a full context, he's like 28 or 29. Um, He's like a fitness instructor. I don't know. He's he's not famous. I don't know what his money look like and all that shit. and her, him and Kiki have been dating for a while. Uh, and, uh, and it seemed like at least the, he hadn't had any overt issues with between him and her uh, that people knew of before this. But he has a lot of, quote, unquote, problematic tweets that people looked up mm-hmm. and found all of that shit. You know how they got to hit the, the black Twitter CSI on their ass. Um, and so they dredged up a bunch of like fucked up opinions he's had, which, you know, at the same time, fucked up opinions he had and they was dating, you know, some of that time and uh, whatever. Um, so who knows if she knows or, or not, you know. Um, but the Twitter roasted him so bad that like Kiki was putting out TikToks like subliminally addressing it, you know, and stuff like that. She put out like a dancing TikTok about that made it sound like an ultimatum, like to leave your boyfriend or whatever. Um, and make kind of making jokes out of it. She posted another um, picture uh, with her and her baby being like, I'm a mom. She's selling merch that says you a mom now. That's, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it is funny. Um, but um, there was a couple of things I was, well, a lot of shit I was thinking about with it because it was just a lot of mm-hmm. comments about it. Yes, it was. Um, but I've been talking for a while, just describing what happened. What do you think so far? To me, like everything else, this is some shit that we didn't have to know. Like all jokes aside, you could have called her on the phone. You could have had a conversation with her. You could have waited till y'all got home and y'all could have had a conversation about your insecurities because all you're doing is projecting your insecurities about her. Mm -hmm. And truth be told, and this, and this is how I feel about, truth be told, there are, how can I say this? There are a lot of men who feel like once they put their dick inside of you, everything you are and everything you're going to be is about them and their opinions and how they feel. And I, And it's one of those things where we can talk about things, we can even compromise on things, but also you don't have control over her. You like, like, I, like, I don't think men understand no matter how many kids you have with her, you don't control her. She's an individual person who can decide what she wants to do and not want to do what she puts up with, what she doesn't put up with. And she's been in the industry for a very, very long time. And it's one of those things where 
I I understand when people are like, well, that's not who he married. You know, women grow and evolve just like men grow and evolve too. And it's one of those things to where as people grow and evolve and change, y'all got to talk about this shit. Like I said, this is a private conversation that you put online. And so you're going to have all people's opinions online come in all types of ways. You're going to have people shuts flaming. You're going to have people mom shaming. You know, you have a group of people that feel like once you pop a baby off, you're supposed to put a, wrap yourself up in a fucking burka and never be considered sexy again. You know, and that's not true. <laughs> you know, that's not, that's not a true statement, you know? Yeah. And also you do, you have, it's crazy. Cause I've kind of seen this periodically. You have men who actually, and, and not, not, I'm not talking about him in particular, but you have men who actually seek out these fine ass women who, who have these wonderful, marvelous lives and their whole goal is to get with them and then try to do everything to kind of get them to conform. And all of a sudden you met at the club and you met her in these tight dress, but all of a sudden you have all these opinions that was the opposite of what attracted you to her. Well, you know, that's, so that's something I actually been considering that. I think people have been saying that, but I don't know how true that is. Like, I think that's what I was getting to, alluding to earlier. Kiki Palmer was like America's sweetheart, not America's like thirst trap when when they got together. Um, her image anyway, for a lot of people was not that people didn't think she was attractive, obviously, but she, you can go look at her Instagram. It was like a different type of vibe before then. And also I just think, she became a mother, but she also filled out, quote unquote, right. and she was enjoying her curse. She was, and this is not me, uh, mm-hmm. inner like this is not me, um, like uh, guessing at this. She said it, she talked about like her body, the body she changed, mm-hmm. and the weight she gained, and the places that it went on her body. And she started dressing differently and putting herself out there differently and changing her kind of image like it not that it's unwholesome to be like a sex spot or to be thirst a thirst trap or whatever you want to call it but it would people see that as unwholesome people see that as something different than right. good morning america or whatever but the point being she that's what she wanted to be seen as that's how she was being seen correct and and, and controlling her own image right and um I don't think people were thinking like she's open for business she going to get she trying to, but it was just like uh even even in that, we were still treating her like a niece where we, or something where it's like, okay, girl, we see you, you know, but nobody's expecting her to just like be out in these streets or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think even the energy from people watching that initial clip is more of a like teasing, like ha 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 type of vibe. But I don't think it's like a they gonna fuck like vibe. I think, people, right. you know, and so this is something I wrote down earlier. I wanted to just quickly get to and then I'll come back to all this. This is also what happens when you had a death of R&B and performers. Because these new niggas don't do this. Mm-mm. Right? Usher, old Usher, school. Usher is old school. This is Usher, the way they used to do it. You, right. Like, these new niggas can't serenade you with a song about drugs and depression, dog. It's not the same, you know? They can't serenade you calling you bitch. Right, you know what I mean? Talk or, or telling I'm gonna steal your girl, meaning I'm singing to a dude right now. Like they don't even make songs like that, and so and you know they don't even have like the the the, the full package of dance and and charisma and all that type of shit. So this is is a foreign concept to anybody that's like been experiencing R and B for like the last probably eight to ten years, maybe a little longer than that. Like the last of the like serenade you dudes, mm-hmm. they are old. <laughs> you know they could be doing residencies. So the it's shocking to a twenty nine year old nigga to see his girl with this dude. He don't. They don't got the cultural. Um, they don't have the cultural like res- resume. Mm-hmm. They, they don't have the cultural connections and ability to con- contextualize this in the like. It's just a fucking performance. Right. Like, like Usher's not gonna fuck your girl tonight. Uh that that's that's he's he he be dancing with Oprah tomorrow. Right. He'll be Anybody dancing. else that comes in there. Right. right. Like this is just part of R and B concert. And back when we were coming up and R and B niggas did shit like this, it even even for us as a, as at a younger age, I feel like while we didn't have social media, so maybe that would have changed things, but 
for the most part, dudes would see this as like a this is a confirmation my girl's a bad bitch. It's a confirmation that uh she's she's getting all turned on, and then later on we're gonna have sex because shout out to my man Usher for for making her feel super special and everything tonight, you know. That's that, but I think that's a that's a cultural thing that we grew up with. Right. So this is not crazy to us, you know, mm-hmm. to to that it would that that it could that it's possible your lady could be on stage and that it's possible this dude could sing a serenade her and then it's and that's it. That's and then it's fucking nothing more finished. to it. Like it, I, they not gonna meet up. They're not. Uh, that's it. Right. So I think that's a that's a big part of it that's missing is just a, that's a gender generational gap. Two. Young dudes think young do young dude shit. Yeah, they do. And a lot of the people that are dunking on this 29-year-old, we fucking 40. Right. We're we're old enough to know better and to be like, that ain't shit. That don't matter. But like stuff that happens to the to younger people, it feel different than them, and they don't have the like mm-hmm. the life experience yet to realize this is nothing. And and the reason I say I don't think they have that at that age is also. I guarantee you the people within his social circle were were making fun of him. Mm-hmm. Like, look at your girl. That's your girl. That's and I guarantee you that's part of the like what triggered him into like saying some stupid shit like you a mom or whatever the fuck. Uh and being in his feelings and and doubling down and even with the internet coming at him and being like, man, calm down. That's Kiki, blah, blah, blah. To him, is he is just like, this is not the girl I got with. Girl I got with was America's sweetheart, girl next door. Everybody wasn't supposed everybody agreed she was beautiful. Not everybody was supposed to be trying to fuck. So he he don't like that, is my guess. <clears throat> um, and then you add the embarrassment, the youth, uh, obviously the general misogyny of men, mm-hmm. the entitlement of men, right, and all that stuff. And you have him say something like that. Um and I think something you said and something I've been seeing a lot of women say, a lot of men say that I think is one of the reasons I don't feel like this is an extreme opinion, but a lot of people aren't saying it's ridiculous that he will have any level of insecurity mm-hmm. or or it's impossible that he might, they might need to have a conversation about how they represent each other outside the house. Mm-hmm. No, I, one. The reason I know people actually, because as, as extreme as the conversation became, the reason I know most people are reasonable is because almost all the responses I saw had some variation of you you should have texted her. You should have right. called her. Y'all should have talked about this, mm-hmm. which means they can understand his point. Right. They don't like the way he went about it. Mm-mm. And that is the reason I ultimately feel he is wrong is because the way he went about it to me does not suggest I really would like to resolve this. It suggests I need the world to see me put my woman in check and show everyone how upset I am and that she is mine and that I'm going to put a stop to this because how does it look for me is that messaging is what is what you do when you put it on social media versus, and I'm not saying you have to say it that way, but like to text her versus uh, inside, like, let me holler at you. Boo, for real, like, this is not what we was doing six months ago. It just kind of feels like you're changing and blah, blah, blah. And I, like, you'd have to have a real conversation where you have to be vulnerable and you have to look like less than a quote unquote man, man. And you have to talk to her and, and want to be understood and all this shit. Or you can pull this shit, which is a public display that you know is not going to work. It's just going to make her defensive, you defensive, everyone's in your business now. But But at least you look like you are the one in charge and telling her what to do and you ain't going to get played like this. And I think that's what I see missing in the conversation is like people can identify with his insecurity. I think even people that disagree with what he did can identify with the insecurity. Like, yeah, I can see how that could be a need to be a conversation. It's not a lot of women have negotiated that conversation. A lot of men, I'm sure, have negotiated. If you're in a relationship that comes with certain preferences, constraints and stuff like that, styles, people are different. Mm -hmm everyone's not going to be 100% free to be themselves because that's what the commitment to another person is. Sometimes you have to think about someone other than yourself. That's the whole point of it. So people can relate to that. Um, 
it could be an introvert versus the extra versus uh dating an extrovert and the introvert and the extrovert have to have a conversation about like uh public events and how long are we gonna mm-hmm. stay out and how much attention are we gonna draw in right and stuff like that people make those compromises all the fucking time but you don't put it on twitter right you don't and- you don't see a picture of your girl talking and you cat you quote tweet it and be like she ain't gonna keep talking to people at this party or so i'm gonna fucking like you don't say that right because then the point is not to resolve the conflict the point is to let the world know you have a conflict but you do not like like you don't like what's happening you need the world to see that and that's why people say he she it felt like he was trying to embarrass her right not right. the other way not the other way around like she wore this outfit to embarrass you no she wore the outfit to have fun with her girls and and and, and like you know like it was going to be like a cute fun moment she wasn't thinking I'm going to try to fucking destroy my family tonight. She wasn't thinking he was going to freak the fuck out on 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 social media tonight. So he but he when he sent that tweet, he knew it would embarrass her. There's right. no fucking way he did. Right. And 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 that goes to the point where men do this shit It's fucking embarrassing and you want to fucking control somebody. You're trying to goddamn control her. And a lot of women, I'm not, and I don't know about Kiki, a lot of women do not respond well to being fucking reined in, particularly publicly. Because just like you got your boy, she got her girls now. Going, girl, you dealing with that bullshit? I wouldn't deal with that from a man. So now you kicked off a whole nother set of fucking problems when you could have just talked to her individually and kept it in house. Right, and I think um, the stuff, the things that get lost in this is just people don't want to look at the context as a whole they don't want to see the the messaging um not and i'm not talking conspiratorial messaging just this is this is a and then that outcomes raises mean this, we're going to be and so yeah him putting it out there was to embarrass her I, it's just not yeah and there's no the way to be around. reasonable and think the world wouldn't have felt like you were trying to embarrass her um and then i think you know some of her responses um are kind of like petty and childish in in that it's like fun stuff that she's doing on the internet. They're not like serious responses to a conversation or whatever. But that's her prerogative. This is what happens when you try to embarrass somebody. Now it's just a big ass public conversation where they're saying public shit back to try to like either squash it or make it funny or move on to the next thing or make it lighthearted. You know, like selling merch and stuff to a certain extent is gonna make people feel like. Oh well, if they if they stay together and work it out, it must not have been that serious because she was selling merch and she was doing this. Now who knows how serious it really is? She knew the kind of nigga she was dating, so maybe she, this was not beyond the pale to her. Maybe she was like, "He might get mad. I don't know. This is just how we do in our house. It ain't that big a deal." But um, they unfollowed each other on Instagram, uh, which is kind of wild that this is a. Uh, a family that seemed to have been together and it what if we can literally yeah. trace it back to this one tweet and be like we don't know that it was the first straw but it definitely was the last and it's also one of those things too to where you can't do this and just not expect her to have no response to it right like literally like you did that and you just thought you're gonna beat your chest and whip your dick out and she was supposed to go oh okay baby you know because it's one of those things where not trying to be funny, and 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 it's and it's not to uh, uh uh call him out, but nigga, you ain't nobody. I don't mean no harm. Like we know who she is, we don't know who you are, and it's- well, he ain't nobody to us. Correct. Because see, this is the other thing too, and I know that this is how parasocial relationship shit happens. Everyone talking about it talks about how expendable he is. And we're only talking about our value system. Agreed. We didn't have a baby with him. Mm-mm. I have no idea how she feels about this man. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, it's easy. Like, I it, like to me, that's why I think some of the social media stuff in her response is a little weird and also feels like a young person's right. type, of, type of decision. Because to me, the response is more like winning the public. Or ride, not even winning. She's already winning. Riding the public wave of like this conflict and how much people support you. Well, yeah, you're riding the wave. But if this dude is feeling a certain way and that's half the fucking parentage of your kid and however y'all are romantically, 
that could be a long term inconvenience or problem for you if he really is some somebody that is is actually feeling like like was y'all were doing fine and then he did this shit and and then you're now riding the wave of it. I can see how that's not a smart long term decision because. If that's a real person that you care about and not, you know, somebody you're using for cloud on the internet or something, you know, it's like probably best that you do clean that up before you make move on and make jokes and try to get Twitter on your side. Yeah, and it's also one of those things to where when things like this happen, only time will tell if maturity will uh jump in or not yeah um and whether this is the beginning of a pattern of a just a dysfunctional public relationship because we see those all, I, I, too online mm-hmm. um and or you know they might have you know they might have a conversation but she'd be like hey next time just give me your call just call me like don't do this bullshit right you know and even privately, you know, your insecurities, all that stuff can come up. But guess what? There's no video cameras. You're not putting on a show for your boys. And so all that was an ego thing, because if ego was not involved, you would have just pulled her to the side. You wouldn't have felt like you had to do some form of a public display mm-hmm. about her. You yeah, know, I mean, and, I and think, her actions. Yeah. And I think because um, people have been obviously comparing them to all kinds of other dudes that just don't do shit like this. Um you know, which is also interesting because even the quote unquote bad boys, the dudes that uh we consider to be like the bad boys of, of of pop culture and stuff, a lot of times they date women that do dress like that all the time before, you know, like it's not like to them, it's like, yeah, I got a bad chick and y'all looking at her. Like I want y'all to know she right. she the baddest or whatever. Um, and then also now when like beauty can be its own like literal um economy for one person like you can be like uh what do you do i'm i'm just a, like an influencer of some type these dudes are ba- dating chicks that how they look and being attractive and everybody wanting to fuck them is the fucking thing they do for a living in a lot of cases right. the difference i think in this case is this dude got with kiki palmer and didn't think that she was gonna ever be in that type of lane um and I'm not saying she wouldn't have wanted to or whatever. I just know she wasn't in that lane. She may have been trying to be out there for a while and, you know, the world will just fucking turn up. Once we typecast you, that's just who you are. You everybody's right. little niece. And, but um, at the same time, she may have wanted to be seen this, seen this way or she may have decided this. And it changed the dynamics of the relationship. Uh, and, and it's either, and that's, that's the thing about long-term relationships. You're never really dating a stagnant fixture of a person. You're dating a changing, evolving person every day. You're dating the per. Your the relationship is the promise to be there tomorrow for the person that's not here yet. You know, like I'm like I'm not just dating you. I'm dating who who I want, who you want to be, who who you think you'll be, who you will become. That's what a relationship commitment is. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying everybody makes it to that. Sometimes people check out, and that's and part of the reason you check out is you're not who you were. You're not who I thought you were. You're becoming someone different, and I don't want to. And I or I'm becoming different, and I'm not who you thought I was. Like that's why relationships a lot of times break up, right? And it's 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 something that happens all the time. This could be the breakup point. Just he could have been uncomfortable the last six months. Like I, don't, I what is this? Like Kiki, I thought we was doing something different. Yeah, and that boils down to you should have had a conversation Boom. in the house, right? Like I'm, 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 I'm supposing I'm, you know, because it happens to I don't know most people, yeah. men, women, significant other, no matter what you are, your insecurities will show up in relationships, and they have to be discussed in order for the relationship to be right. Uh, um, I can say to be strong, you know, because once the communication breaks down, everything else breaks down a lot of times too. It's like communication stops and then nothing else fucking matters. If if y'all don't get that shit back on track. Yeah. And I think not too long ago, we've seen examples where it's, well, I'll just say it's been divisive for a long time about men, women, uh, motherhood, fatherhood, all the double standards, the misogyny, patriarchy of, you know, like, all of that stuff is it's just been that way for a long time and i think because especially this dude is not 
special to us. We don't know him Mm-mm. as a as a public culture. Right. It we're not gonna be on his side anyway. Now, if this is two famous motherfuckers, I don't know what would happen. I'm gonna be honest, because <laughs> motherfuckers ain't consistent. Like it's no, they're not. You know, if if it was if it was he was famous and she wasn't, I don't know what what it would be. I don't. I really don't. But. For the most part, I've seen most of the people kind of real be like, "Man, this nigga, she need to just get rid of this nigga then, you know, because this is what it is or whatever." But that's one part of it, um, with the him being young, with the Usher putting on a, a real show, with Kiki's evolution. Um, but then there's this other part of it too that I think is like social media's power, mm-hmm. because. If he would have just been a random dude and got roasted on Twitter, that would have been kind of like whatever. That what a loser. We would have made up whatever about him. Um, because he seems like a troll, like looking at his old tweets and stuff. But him being like actually in her life changes a lot. <laughs> like, like we're used to the, a nigga with an ashy opinion every once in a while. You're like, yeah, that's just some everybody ain't gonna agree. You know, uh look at all the people that took future side when it was Somehow, Future versus Sierra, and people was like, "But he's so cool." <laughs> Men were like, "He's so cool. He can even he's not cool enough to mistreat a very famous woman and and forever." Wow, y'all tripping? <laughs> right, that's how it felt. These new niggas. Um, but yeah, I just think that um, that so you have you have that America's connection to Kiki, Black Twitter's connection to Kiki. The gender wars of it all, because also I think this is like, to me, if you look at that whole scene, it seemed like Usher's just putting on a show for a lot of black women. Right. It's like black girl time. Mm -hmm. And just like Megan Thee Stallion twerking at Essence Fest isn't really about anything, but just like the girls having a good time. Right. The girls having a good time watching Usher sing. That's why they came. Right. That's why the shit got extended two or three times. That's why he been doing it forever. Like this fuck around might be a permanent residency. Right. So they, yeah, I just think it's uh, kind of interesting that uh, that's a big part of, of this whole thing is black girls just having a good time. You could have just left it alone. If you was tight about it, you could have texted her later. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and I do, but I do think it's just as weirdly parasocial and callous to like celebrate the idea of that family that if that seemed to be happy before, it possibly was happy before. We don't know for sure, but it feels weird to celebrate that they're not going to, they possibly might not be together. You know, because I think also there's a huge possibility they will be together because this Only nigga was time. this nigga the whole time. Only time will tell. It's just probably sh- we weren't paying attention and she didn't care. Right. And, and a lot of women are with dudes right. like this. Just like, just like this. Yeah. So, like, I'm not that, you know, fucking, I would not be shocked to see these motherfuckers make it through this. Um, because people make it through way worse shit anyway. Yes, they do. But to some extent, they may have a similar value system because one thing people forgot in this last like three years that Kiki's really gotten it together, social media wise and everything. Kiki used to be the person everybody was like, she would tweet something, everybody be in her shit. Like I remember being like, you classist and all this shit. Like she used to get uh, canceled on Twitter. So maybe her and his opinions ain't that fucking far off. You never know. Like, like guess she, guess what they are private. Is yeah, exactly. Like she learned to stop sharing that shit, and right. it seemed like he need to learn that shit too. Um. So yeah, I just think that's that's weird. That you know, I think people are acting really weird because I I do I don't think the extremes are equal, but the extremes to me of basically you should never even worry about anything involving your significant other. Now that's unrealistic. And uh, whatever, like the, you have that version that I'm just like, okay, well that's probably sociopathic. Ooh. And it's definitely probably gender driven because yes. you absolutely have some, some shit that you don't want your man doing. I don't know what it is. I'm not judging. I, I really, like we say on the show all the time, uh, if it's two consenting adults and it's not abuse, have at it. 
Right. So, I, you know, I know there's some women that like the the whole, like, open the door for me, um, pay, for, pay for the meal, um, you know, all that, you buy the dress, all that, that, and they, and they, and to them, they perform a certain type of femininity that the dude likes. Mm -hmm. If y'all happy, um, if y'all like it, I love it. You know what That's I mean? I feel you. You so like I love it. I don't really put it past the idea that these motherfuckers can stay together mm -hmm. um, just because they seem to have been happy before and maybe they were and maybe this shit was him fucking up but it wasn't a uh, it it wasn't the deal breaker that a lot of people think it is. It, right. So that could be possible. So I don't but I think a lot of people that are rooting for her to break up with him if she shows back up with this nigga they will kind of turn on her yeah yeah but 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 just like it's her choice to go to the usher residency and wear that outfit it's her choice to be with him and mm -hmm. like a lot of these are choices and a lot of it goes back down to now since y'all got us niggas involved now we want to control you right so i think that could be yeah and, and we've seen that happen with other people before like cardi being offset like mm -hmm. i thought it was really weird and childish when People were hoping she cheated on Offset, even though they had seen the resolve, whatever their issues were as a family, like a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. And yet people were like, it just for the like staying culture, get back of it. Not because they don't actually see these people as human beings. Correct. They see them as avatars for the insecurities that they harbor, mm -hmm. which is why so many men glommed on to this dude. Uh they never heard of until he said Kiki Palmer better put some clothes on. Right. A lot of men glommed on to him because they are insecure people that needed an avatar. They don't know this dude. Mm -mm. They don't care about the rest of his stances and the fucked up things he said in the past and all that. Nope. To they them, don't. he's the new hero. Right. And that's the thing. They don't care about the consequences and repercussions of his relationship. And every right. They don't care about that. And every man who has issues feeling like they need to control women and all that shit that jumped out of them and mm -hmm. you can see those men you know being on the other side of this just as fervent as the leave them sis motherfuckers too like it's yes, all sir. it's all just variations of the same shit because we don't know these strangers you know but the conversations that it creates are kind of like fodder and they're good like things that I guess think through or whatever um what I thought was funny too is Usher still doing his concerts, and so Winnie Harlow is a model. Uh, you'll know her. I'll put her picture up. You'll know her when you see her. But she's a model, and she's dating NBA player Kyle Kuzma, who just got that hundred and something million dollar contract to stay with the Wizards. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were sitting in the front row, and Usher came up to try to serenade her, and she went and sat on on his lap. He still serenaded her anyway, but she was sitting on his lap, you know, on his man's lap, on her man's lap, and he, and they're laughing about it, you know. Yeah, and, 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 and to me, it's funny and playful, right? Because you know, it's one of those things where you know, from their perspective, it was like, ah, oh, we ain't gonna be that, or either she was like. If, if if he come over here, I'm gonna go over here. I'm just gonna sit on you. Like like not trying to find it. Like it it could have been two ways. It could have been they both was like no, or it could have been we both gonna joke. You know him if he comes over here. And I thought this is how far it's gone, Karen. People are arguing about that. Like they're like she's a whack bitch because you if your man won't let you get up there with Usher, then you da da da. And and this is why I said this is why I'm saying like the extremes and the mm -hmm. a, the uh, insecurities are jumping out of people because mm -hmm. I guess I don't have those insecurities and I looked at it and thought oh that just it's funny mm -hmm. that and everyone's laughing cute, right even he was like Usher's well, I laughing guess you chose. it didn't look like Kyle Kuzma like yanked her arm like you better not bitch like it wasn't mm -hmm. no abusive looking shit no it would look like some oh, funny oh. stuff and it low key was kind of that same like. It, it kind of these are also young people, but they kind of like it's kind of like the older point of view about it, where it's like, yeah, I'm still gonna let you serenade me, but this is for my man. Wait till we get home, ha ha ha. Yes, it was cute, and yet people been like calling her like all kinds of fuck, and I'm talking women saying this to her, 
like she's like she somehow let down the feminism because she didn't like go up there and, and grind on Usher or whatever. It's like so it's so weird. It feels like the worst things about social media's like more liberal side is that they can go so extreme to where like you lose choice. You know what I mean? Where it's like some some people are gonna be like, um, it's like, uh, bitch, you don't got an OnlyFans, you know? Like they take it to that level. You're like, well, I I support you having an OnlyFans. Only fans, I just I, I don't, don't have to make that choice. I want one, right? Right. It's like, if you wouldn't do pornography, then can you truly say you are sex positive? It's like, all right, come on. Right. It's like I, I actually can. Like, yeah. What are we talking about here? Um. But yeah. So they they went and um. They went, they went, they went to the concert and that happened. And that was just kind of like a cute, funny story. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, at least I thought so. But yeah, that's not how the internet treated it. It's no way. World War 17. Not. It did. It, it, like I said, and, and a lot of this is just perfect for the internet mm-hmm. because all it does is the war to sex. They might as, she might as well posted this and wrote thoughts. And like, yeah. like, like that's literally. What it is like them stupid ass Facebook memes. I don't even see them no more because most of those people I got on my goddamn timeline. Yeah. Who you see them Facebook me? What if your girl walk in there butt booty naked at 3 a.m. in the morning eating a piece of fried chicken with your roommate? What you gonna do? Like, bitch, that would never happen. And this is stupid. What are we talking about here? Right. So, um, so that was like a, a big one. And I have like a deeper thing I want to get into. About okay. Let's let's get relationships deep. in general. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna do this next. We're gonna talk this next story to death first, okay? And then we'll, I'll you write it down. down and come back to that. Okay. Um, yeah, done but it you know, we'll talk a little relationship theory for those that like to hear us talk about relationship stuff. Oh, shit, are we gonna get canceled? <laughs> nah, nah, these females know what, what the, <laughs> they know what's up, <laughs> they know what's hoes. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Um, Jonah Hill's ex, Sarah Brady. Blast him over alleged quote unquote emotional abuse. So Jonah Hill's ex girlfriend, who is like a surfer, or was a surfer when he met her. Um, and you know, surfers, they wear not a lot of clothes. Right. And he not thought that was pretty anymore. cute. Like this this isn't the Kiki Palmer where he got with her as American sweetheart and then was like, what what what? Right. Titties. She's like, like I surf, so I wear yeah. fucking bikinis. This is what I do. Yeah, so they got together because he thought she was a cute surfer woman. Um, and then um, they ended up breaking up. And I want to say that was like maybe a year ago. He's now with a new woman who I believe they either are expecting or, or recently had a baby. Uh, matter of fact, let me look it that up. Uh, but uh, yeah, they just welcomed their first baby in June. So he's he's moved on. Um, maybe she's moved on or, or not. I don't know. But uh, in the wake of this, like you know, baby news and kind of n- nothing else really being going on about Jonah Hill, she this weekend pulled out some um, screenshots of some text. Okay. And Instagram. Any mm-hmm. particular reason, or she just. Like I'm, I'm not. I'm she not, I'm, she just literally okay. said that she like she just put the screenshots on there, and um, said fuck it. Like that's that's literally the caption. F u x k it. Fuck it. Um, she did not accuse him of any physical abuse, but she said shared a screen recording of a message her ex allegedly once sent her, in which he stated that some of her Instagram pics were inappropriate. Um, plan. This is from December. T- Second, 2021. Plain and simple. If you need surfing with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men, to model, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit, to post sexual pictures, friendships with women who are in unstable places, and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful, I am not the right partner for you. If these things bring you to a place of happiness, I support it. And there will be no hard feelings. These are my boundaries for a romantic partnership. My boundaries with you based on the ways these actions have hurt our trust. So that's the first thing people shared. And most people only saw this image or a lot of people only saw this image and just went, I'm on his side regardless. Now, I'm going to be honest. 
almost any time you see a wall of text with no replies is almost never looks good for the person sending the text. I'm just just in general, general rule of thumb. But anyway, she did add these later. Uh, she said she put another screenshot of some text back and forth and put, this is a warning to all girls. If your partner is talking to you like this, make an exit plan. Love y'all. Call me if you need an ear. Now, here's what the screenshot says. Respect however you want to live your life. You only get one. Sort of done with explaining myself. Uh, she replied, three removed, not the video yet. It is my best surfing video. Would you feel better if the cover frame was different? Any more specific ones that bother you? This is so. This is her taking down the, the post because he's decided he don't want uh, he don't want her to post them and said he's done explaining himself. He said, yes, one that isn't of your ass in a thong. She said, not a thong, but okay. And he said, and as far as the other pictures, you in a bathing surfing suit or not. So keep in mind, this woman's a surfer. She's posting, she's been posting the whole time surfing pictures. Now that they're together, he's like, nah, you need to change all of that and go back and take these old pictures down. Right. And this is the shit I was talking about before where it's like, it's different than the kind of than the Kiki Palmer thing. You got with her for this and then you're like, nah, rein it in. And you're like, but that's why you're here. Yeah. And obviously like it's posh, it's also my career. So it's not just like this isn't you're making it seem like Instagram is only for the attention of other men or something. Where this is if this is what I do for a living, it's what the fuck I do for a living. Right. You can't change that, you know? Uh, so then um, in another one, she posted, I too struggle with mental health, but I do not use it to control people like he did to me. It's been a year of healing and growth with the help of loved ones and doctors to get back to living my life without guilt, shame, and self-judgment for things as small as surfing in a swimsuit rather than a more conservative wetsuit. And I'm sure there's still much more healing from this abuse ahead of me. Uh, another time he texted her, another wall of one-sided text, which, like I said, I don't know how y'all get down, but that's like a red flag. Just yeah, wall of yeah. one-sided text. You was feeling the way, and the lack of a response was making you do a bunch of wild shit, too. Like, I don't know, man. Um, but this is the one that says, this is from him. It's just constant and doesn't reflect where we're at or where you want say you want to be. I respect your skill and your surfing. I respect how you want to pre present yourself. I respect that you're hot and beautiful, and I respect however you want to live, but I also respect myself and what I'm interested in in my own life and what I let into my heart and, and inner circle. So celebrate yourself in your life however you please and shine bright, but I don't want I don't have to deal, and that's where it cuts off. Um and then another one, she put, I don't care for your misogyny. And he said, you're right. We can't do certain social things or develop trust until you consider me and make decisions that give regard to our relationship. I've been vulnerable as possible. I'm telling you I'm needing you to step up to the plate, which you can. I'm sure of it. But these losers don't get your time if you want me. Straight up, it's consideration. I respect your love of surfing, but I respect myself as well. And your love of surfing and being in those situations and lack of awareness are not mutually exclusive. This isn't me. I have my own issues that I own. If you want marriage and family, you can't use the 25 card. Step up and cut shit. These people don't get your time or your kindness at, at the sacrifice of mine. And he said, by these people, he meant any friend of mine he hadn't personally approved of. Um, another time he wrote, literally just say hello and leave the convo. I love how your therapists think I suck. I literally am the best boyfriend on earth. Um, so yeah, those are like the 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 exchanges they had. And once again, gender divide. I've been seeing men, especially not not a lot, but the people who I've seen be like on Jonah Hill's side have mostly been men. Like being like, all he did. Was what y'all say y'all want men to do. He just expressed his emotions and communicated his boundaries, and he didn't do nothing wrong. And I, she clearly like an evil bitch because she's they broke up and she posted this a year after they broke up. Like, why is she even posting this? What does he even got to do with anything? 
blah 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 you know um and i will give him this though she said she doesn't want him to respond because she's scared of him and i will say that's the most like millennial bullshit i, I yes, don't yes it is i truly just don't believe in that, that like shit get on my nerves it, you you can't just a uh, bully somebody the reverse way of being like i'm such the victim no one gets to hear your side of it only what i'm accusing you of you can't explain shit you can't say shit you you better not address it either or else i'm gonna say now nah, i'm scared of you it's kind of like a little bit of having it both ways mm -hmm. like i'm sorry but but that we know that's not a, rea a, a that's not a reality and it's just to set up anything he says as he's the bully and he's being he's abusing me now mm -hmm. uh and and y'all are witnessing him abuse me so i and once again not not i'm not on his side but that that clearly is like a that's like a new it's like a new nigga thing a, a new it's like a millennial thing uh whatever the generation at the millennial thing it's like a very kind of like moral i have the right away situation to them and i'm just like this as a gen x person let me tell you the street is always both ways whether you're right or wrong even when you have the moral authority the motherfuckers gonna always get a chance to say what they're gonna say too right you can't and just, just gonna happen you want to say and then shut shit down and act yeah. like it's all good no it's not like you shit on somebody that's publicly where you know it's gonna go viral and fuck up their career the idea that they will say nothing is 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 almost immature at that point like that they, yes you know or or if they say anything is now they're threatening you is is also immature. like it's just not that it's just not facts right and it's also uh one of those things where like i said i hope i'm never actually put in that position and I hope I'm mature and everybody claim what they would have, could have, should have. But I can't promise you if a situation blows up online that I won't be like, bitch, bitch, what you say? Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't promise you that uh, that I won't do that under certain situations and certain circumstances. Like I, right. like, like, I really do hope that I am mature enough to put the phone down, talk to people. But I can't promise you when I'm wrapped up in my emotions and all I see is your fucking side of the story and I'm just supposed to sit there and just let you la 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 and I can't be like bitch shut the fuck up I got an opinion too you're not the only one that experienced the situation I do too you know I I was there too I experienced too we went through this together may have had two different circumstances but this but but what happened is just not from your perspective yeah and so the thing for this to me is I think it's obviously his own insecurities especially with the fact that they got together this has always been her this has always been how she like presented herself mm -hmm. and i think a lot of the words in there are so filled with like passive aggressiveness but also kind of like jerry on um jerry on rick and morty where he's playing the like i'm pathetic card kind of and and it, in a way it shuts down it makes he has to be right because he's pathetic you know what i'm saying it's the I know you're high and you're beautiful and listen, these are just my boundaries. I'm, I'm just saying I'm gonna break up with you, but it's your choice. No hard feelings. It's that kind of like manipulative, like I'm a loser, but not really to me that I'm picking up from the stuff he's saying. Um, and I think, and he's doing it to manipulate the, her actions to be like, yeah, you have to take these pictures down. Cause I'm, I, I'm the one being taken advantage of by you posting pictures that you always posted, you know, why are you wearing a bikini? Why, why are you wearing uh, a wetsuit? Well, you, I was wearing a wetsuit every, the whole time. I was wearing a bikini the whole fucking time. Before I well, you. now you're disrespecting our relationship. It all has to come down. That, yeah. And, and, and yeah, that's and, like, to me, that's, and then what do you, and what do you, and he's not saying it like, bitch, take that shit down. Mm -hmm. You a mom. He's saying it like, because you know, it's just a boundary for me. It's, it's therapy terms. It's, it's, it's you know, I'm couching it in the language of, of passive shit so that I'm a victim here. And and then it makes you feel guilty because you're 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 causing this pain to me. That's why I say it reminds me of Jerry from Rick and Morty, because he he's the victim and I'll, I'll feel sorry for me. But really, he's manipulating you into doing some shit that if he would have just said, bitch, take them pictures down, we would all be like, yeah, that's abusive. Yeah, and also it's one of those things where he could have left the relationship at any period of time. Like, you know what I'm saying? And my thing is, 
she was doing this when y'all met. So these actions and these pics and stuff, it's nothing new. Right. You know, and it sounds like y'all had a uh, con- y'all y'all had conversation and talked to each other outside of those texts. And you know, we are not privy to any of these conversations and what was said, yeah. and what was explained, she, it could. and all that type of stuff. Yeah, and I do, and I think there's something to the people that are skeptical of this because they're like, she did wait till this nigga had it seen this nigga had moved on, had a whole different thing, and also this isn't our business. So like, and a lot of people don't agree that this is even abuse. Like I know some people think it's abuse, but uh, and it's like it's an emotional abuse and stuff. But I think the term abuse has gone too it's gotten too vague like like the stuff it's like how what people try to do with violence where it's like you're doing that to to escalate the language but you're also doing that so that we can label stuff you can make people bad guys you know if you have a conflict then all of a sudden the conflict the person you have a conflict with that's now abuse and and there's no other reason period you know so, like, obviously, I'm aware that the person is delivering the message. Of course, they're biased. She's not ever really putting out what she said. It's when he was saying wild shit. Correct. I don't know. There's a big age gap. She was only, like, tw- I think she's 25 now and he's 39 or something. So, like, okay. th- like there's a big age gap. So, there's already some weird power dynamics that are going to be at play anyway. Um, and also, at that age, that's when people kind of date and do loser shit anyway like not that she's a loser but right yeah you know that's kind of when people can make those quote unquote mistakes of being like i was with this kind of person and i was learning the kind of person i don't want to be with this right. motherfucker. um so i think that's part of it um too that 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 age gap um and also jonah hill seems to be like this at least he tried to he may put a special on netflix with his therapist so he wants to be like this master of therapy nigga but, and this is what I said, I've been saying for a long time, me and Bossy talk about this a lot. The way people are using these therapy words to then be the person who's wrong but said the right therapy words, that that is the thing that gives him cover. Mm-hmm. So, like, he can say it's a boundary, but when is policing what your person wears a boundary for you? That's... Like, that's not even really how boundaries work. Boundaries are like, mm-hmm. be here or don't be here. You don't use a boundary to, like, control and manipulate a person. Um, the only time you really see that as a recommended thing is if you're talking to someone who's, like, a drug addict. Where people will say, you can use a boundary. Like, I will not be in your life if you're doing cocaine. Right. You know, but he's using that language to somebody to be like, I don't like you're a 25-year, a 23-year-old surfer woman. And you have bikini pictures up there from when I got with you and I beyond. Twenty three, right? We we not married or nothing, but just you know, you need to change everything. Um, and it's about it. It's about me being happy. And, hey, you don't have to. I'll just break up with you. No big deal. You know, <laughs> like it's like it is that kind of like control that you feel that I feel oozing from his text. Um, so I think that's a big part of it too. Um. And I think the 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 thing I wanted to kind of like bring all this shit together with is this. I think the way people are arguing over all this stuff, the way that men are fooled by the Jonah Hill thing, or they're just entitlement and privilege don't allow them to see what he's doing. Um, and the way that men versus women on the extremes of the Kiki Palmer thing has broken out. Um, Same thing, this is a man versus woman conversation. And that's because, and it's a very obviously says heteronormative patriarchal conversation too. It's, a right, yeah, a right. But I think what's happening here is this, this is the thing I think about love all the time and relationships all the time. And one of the reasons we don't really do relationship talk and, and letters and advice and shit, because I think the vast majority of people look at relationships, especially romantic partnerships of any kind, they look at them, in my opinion, wrong. You know, it's just my opinion. It's just the way I see life, you know, but they look at them wrong because it's about power. Yes. And to most people, they need to be and feel the most powerful and and it's who's winning this power struggle. That's why people, you know, like to see couples fight. 
That's why people spread, you know, those viral podcast videos about a man saying something stupid to a woman or, or, you know, somebody saying something fucking fucked up and, and then that, that goes viral because it's about power and conflict. Power breeds conflict. And we want to see who's winning the conflict. That's who's most powerful. Right. Regular, normal as people who are in a happy relationship, they are boring as fuck. Yeah. It's not, um, it's not like about, it's about content and content generation mm-hmm. and what we can generate off the content. And also it helps us to all look better than these people. Mm-hmm. And even when it's the lowest of bars, like motherfuckers will dunk on somebody like, uh, fellas, if it don't be like this. And it's like a dude that just like kicked, kicked this woman down a flight of stairs. It's like, well, nigga, no one should be like that. That's, you're not a hero. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like you didn't become like we're not sitting around like thank God he said it you know uh you know don't don't you know I wouldn't have tweeted at my woman like that of course most people wouldn't have even the fucked up dudes know not to do that shit you're you're not special nope you know but uh anyway I think people we get to dunk on them and we like to engage in that stuff but relationships about power power about control. Control is about fear. Yes. So I think ultimately in both of these, um, both of these, you know, timeline discussions and the discussions that they generated and the original conflicts, you're talking about scared men. Mm -hmm. Jonah Hill uses, tries, he wants to make her scared because he's scared. I'm, I'm, 40-year-old Jonah Hill or whatever, 37-year-old Jonah Hill with the reputation 37-year-old Jonah Hill with all the attention focused on my body and all the insecurities I have and all this other shit and all, you know, the entitlement that comes with everything I got, the money and that, all that. I'm dating this much younger woman that is very attractive and everybody sees it um, that I was attracted to and decided to holler at and she gave me some attention, but Anybody could slide up in them DMs. I'm sure other men sliding up in them DMs all the time. Um, so he feels like I need to control you. I'm scared. Scared of the next nigga that slides in the DMs or whatever. Scared because I don't trust you or whatever it whatever is. Whatever it is. But wh- I'm not going to own it. Right. I'm going to make you change your image. I'm going to make it your problem. If it's your problem, then it's not my problem. And I don't have to change, correct acknowledge it talk about it actually face it work through it to figure out why am i feeling this way or what's the root foundation of me feeling this way so that i can sometimes you don't overcome insecurities you learn how to live with them and you can learn how to be aware of when things trigger them so that you can act accordingly these things don't disappear nor do they go away because you're a human being but the war, and I remember Bossy said this, and when she said this, she, I think she even said it on our show one time, I have to taken this to heart, and I will always uh, uh, function like this. You have to adjust to the world. The world will not adjust to you. Yeah. And so I thought about that. I was like, yeah, that's true. So you have to learn how to function in the world, and you have to learn how to function with your insecurities, your flaws, your misgivings, how you were raised, all that type of stuff. You have to learn how to function in the world with these things. And you have to learn the world is not going to coddle you. The yeah, world is not going to make you feel better based off of your insecurities. Yeah, that's that's the thing with the Jonah Hill thing. Because I think what you're saying is like, he's using this therapy language. And it's something, yeah, me and Bossy do talk about um, uh and I remember we have an episode talking about the world's not going to be put in bubble wrap, you know. Um, and so, anyway, the point being, yeah, the the language he's using is therapy, but it's not what therapy does. Mm-mm. Therapy doesn't do this, like, present everybody in your life with ultimatum. This is the therapy you see on, like, social media where it's just sociopathic shit being, quote, unquote, backed up by anonymous therapists where it's right. like, I told my boss, I'm going to come into work when I feel like it. And, and and my therapist said, if they don't like it, fuck them. And you're just like, no therapist said that. You're right. No licensed therapist. Worth like, I don't know who you've been talking to on the phone, but get, get the fuck off the phone because 
an actual therapist is not going to tell you some shit to go endanger your job right. when you're clearly the one that's fucking wrong. Like they're just that's they're not here to be your girlfriends and your best friends and pat you on the back. Um, and I think that's how he makes it sound. But did you peep how he also when when he was like your therapist thinks I'm the worst person in the world, meaning like you can't trust your therapist. Now my therapist told me. I need to draw boundaries, and my boundaries are you can't put shit on Instagram no more. Uh, but but your therapist hate me now. He's trash. Okay, get rid of him. Um, right, you want you went in there. You don't know what kind of conversation they had. Right, let me be your therapist. You know, uh, but so you got people, in my opinion, in these relationships, and the way they view them with the power and the f- control and the fear is that ultimately people see relationships as a box. That they want to put someone in. Yes. And especially in this case, in a lot of times, it's the privilege of being a man, right? That you even see the world this way as a putting a woman in a box, basically. But I would argue there's just different type of boxes for different people. And there's some boxes that people put men in um, and all that stuff. And, of course, there's people that date within the same gender. And you can still – that's why I'm trying to keep the terms general when I say people see – a relationship as a power thing and then a power thing is about a control thing a control thing is about a fear thing and what don't you fear the things in the boxes the things you lock up they can't surprise you they can't hurt you because they're in their fucking box where they belong in and, their place in their place and that's all it becomes about keeping them in their place yeah, you are pursued have unpredictable you pursued this person who was free making choices that attracted you and then you said i want this free thing to be boxed up so i can keep it yes you want to cage a bird but then what why doesn't the cage bird sing it don't sing like it used to no more because you got this motherfucker in the cage right um but before you know they don't this isn't even getting to that stage right they just throw you in the cage right Mm -hmm. and a lot of people fundamentally don't see a relationship as a commitment to edifying each other, supporting each other, to being that safety net under the tightrope. And sometimes being a safety net fucking sucks. That's part of the deal. It's, right? I got sick. You got this. Somebody got to do something. You know, I'm working more. You got to cook more. You got to clean more. Uh, we, You got to take two jobs. It, it could be whatever it is within a relationship. But the promise you made to each other is sometimes you got to be the safety net. But to me, that's the idealistic version. That's the ideal version. What often happens is some version like this a lot of times. It's the how much c- control can I have over you? And if it's not enough, you got to go. Like, yeah, I need and, to completely control this. Yeah, and also a lot of those people, and like I said, I don't know, so maybe you can confirm this. A lot of, I'm talking about straight perspective when I say this. A lot of men who do this look at men who, quote unquote, don't control their women like something is wrong with them. Mm-hmm. When they allow their woman to do whatever hobbies, to go out without her, kick it with her girlfriends, be a professional, have a job, uh, 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 have a career, become a doctor while he might have his master's or might not even have, have got a degree. You know how he's just inse- he's so secure in who he is that she doesn't intimidate him Mm -hmm. and they look at men and they actually want to poke at him until and if that man isn't aware of that they can pick up on those men's insecurities and ruining their relationships based off of some niggas that don't give a fuck about your happiness Mm -hmm. yeah i think also we see i know women see this so often because men are so full of this this type of control because we've been told that your woman is almost like an accessory but like a possession and what a possession is about is how it reflects on you how it's useful to you because it's a possession possession is not supposed to have feelings it doesn't have agency and so it's like how your woman looks that reflects on you and, and what kind of man you are how she acts that reflects on you what kind of man you are how much control you have over her is about you being a better man, right? Uh, and we, people still believe in that logic to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for for me in general, I think how free a person is also matters. And I think how happy a person is 
also matters. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like when you hear that, those, those guys who say, like, if I marry a woman, she's 98 pounds, she better be 98 pounds 40 years from now, because that's what she was when we got married. And it's like, I'm dating a static object. If my car was 3,000 pounds when I bought it, it better be 3,000 pounds 20 years from now. That's how you talk about an object, not a human fucking being, right? Right. Um, you don't say that shit about yourself. If I'm earning $60,000 now, I better earn $60,000. I better be making uh, that much every day for the rest of my life. Like you, you're not, you don't think that way, but in this, the way we promote masculinity, it's like, you must look like you're controlling her. And I'm sure 100% sure there's women versions of controlling men and shit too. You know, um, some of it being boundary stuff, some of it being unfair, you know, like I totally get it. That's why I said I didn't knock the Kiki Palmer thing. The insecurity of it, I didn't knock that much because I think it's very common. Yes. And I think people make compromises in their relationship all the fucking time. The same way that some people be like, I don't want you going to strip club. Like, I'm not saying everybody, obviously the people listening to the show that we're about to write in, you're all really super cool. You let, you let your girl fuck Usher, I'm sure. Like, it's not, I'm not... Y'all do what y'all want to do, but I'm just saying it's a common enough insecurity that it's, you know, there's women that are like, I don't want my man to watch porn or something. There's, it's common enough that it's a trope because there are people that feel threatened by that. And that's a thing that those couples will have to talk about and find their lines and work through it. Right. Whatever they got to do. Right. So I think that's one version of this, but there's this other version that's just, I want to control you. Mm Mm-hmm. Like end. maybe they'll grow out of it, maybe they'll change, maybe they won't. But at this point, it's I'm scared of what you do and how it looks for me. Even if what you do is literally what you do. Kiki Palmer's image is what Kiki Palmer does. This surfer she woman make work off of her image. This is what she does. Right. And, you, and you're like, but what what I'm more what's more important is me. me. What's more important is me, <laughs> right. and 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 it's uh it's hilarious, and uh people know this, but because a lot of times in relationships people get so caught up in their own individuality they don't look right. at the unit because you know when you're in relationships you are a unit no matter how many people's in a relationship it's still a unit, mm-hmm. and so it's one of those things where this person was a person before they knew your ass existed. And they will continue to be a person long after you're gone or y'all are no longer together. Right. And people do not look at people as an individual person with thoughts, feelings, emotions, you know, hobbies and shit that they do outside of you. You are not the center of their world. Right. And that's the thing. People want themselves to be the center of your world, but you are not always the center of their world. They're the center <clears throat> of their world and they don't even consider you. And so that doesn't make sense, you know. Mm. So it's one of those things where people don't um, consider these things. And a lot of times, not trying to find it, when you're young, you're, and like a lot of young people, you're very self-centered. And so once you get older, you begin to look at these things differently. Like you said, mm-hmm. you have a lot of older people coming, people that have been through some shit, people that realize, oh, that shit ain't that important. Or y'all right. can work that out or whatever. Like, like they've had an, enough relationships and enough experience in life to realize that it's not the end of the world. Right. Um, and so the other thing, of just speaking on relationships in general, too, um, I think when we've commodified love so fucking much, we've we've quadrupled down on just patriarchal thinking. Even when we have like shows that are supposed to be inclusive about romance, they still almost always go down the same few type of storylines and power Mm -hmm. dynamics and uh, heteronormativity. Even when you do bring on like, uh, like you want to have a show that represents LGBTQ people, it's still a lot of heteronormative monogamy type leading stuff, you know? So I think a lot of times our imaginations are limited. And so it just becomes about controlling somebody like a toy, like Barbie Mm -hmm. and Ken or some shit. Um, And, you know, we have like 30 million fucking relationship shows. And I put relationship in in quotes that are like reality shows, but it's all like fall in love in three weeks or just met this nigga yesterday. You know, the TV show. 
Will they get married in 90 days? They better go somebody <laughs> getting kicked out. Like <laughs> I see you. Now we in love. Love at first right. sight. Oh, uh, kissing 30 people in a day and tell <laughs> and one of them gotta go home. Like shows that you Yeah, they're just it's it's ridiculous, right. but we treat it like it's real. We we discuss it like it's real because we like these type of discussions, you know. Um, but I think the main thing, the fear is is trying to avoid is being hurt. Right. Right. So you look, once again, <laughs> I, know, I know I'm saying this multiple times, and I'm probably just because I'm high. But it is the 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 power, and then the control, and then the fear, and then the fears of being hurt. And the fear of being hurt is because the only way to really like have the highest highs of a relationship is to be vulnerable. It's the only real way. It's like Batman, it's like, you know, uh, the Dark Knight Rises when he's trying to jump out of the prison and the thing that's weighing him down, making the jump impossible is that he has the rope tied to him. He can only make the leap when he unties himself from the rope, thus, therefore, like, putting full faith in himself, but also physically lifting the weight of the rope off and getting that extra little bit of inch so he can grip the other side and climb out right that is what control is that rope and it gives you the illusion that well i'm safe i can't fall too far because i'm controlling this person how they gonna have time to cheat if i won't even let them fucking put their pictures online if i won't let them go to a concert unless they're dressed you know in the way that i find to be appropriate that amount of control will keep me from being hurt and the truth of the matter is that's an illusion because you can still be hurt. People end up a lot of times doing self-fulfilling prophecy. You police the person you with so much that they're like, I might as well fucking go fuck somebody else. They're like, I might as well get the fuck out of here. This is miserable. This is not the relationship I thought I was getting into. And so you push me into like a place where I'm either going to act out or I don't want to be in. I don't want to be controlled. You right. Know? Um, I want to be valued and equaled and partnered and empowered and all that stuff. And I think it's also self-fulfilling the other way. A lot of times you don't have to put a boundary on a person that wants you to be happy because you're making them happy. Yeah. And also the thing is when you like put people in the box and things like that, you never know what they can become and they can actually outgrow your box and become something even greater than you imagined and become something uh, that could actually benefit them and benefit you too and benefit the relationship. But because you're so, you're so uh, being, being such a person that you feel like you have to have control, your imagination limits the levels of the relationship and how deep the relationship can go. Yes, because how do we talk about relationships and power? We talk about them in, in power analogies and shit. It's you got to submit submission. You know what I mean? Like that's not a sexy term to everybody. I know BDSM people think it's like, but, but, but in you, general, yeah, but, people in their lives, what the fuck is the last time you were happy about submitting anything? It wasn't an application to a job or some shit. Right. Even then you weren't happy about submitting it. You want the job. You you <laughs> Right? you rather just get the job, right? <laughs> the submitting is the worst part, right? Um, so it's, it's like submit to judgment. Like it's not, submitting is not empowering for a lot of people, right? Mm. Um, unless it's like a fetish type thing. Most people would like to be able to make choices. Yeah, and I even think, for a lot of people, even in that, it's a choice to submit. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, I think at its height, a relationship, and this doesn't have to be romantic, just a relationship is at its best when every day you're just choosing each other because this is what I want. I'm where I want. And when I wake up tomorrow, I want it even more because this is making me happy and I like being happy and I like being with you and I, I like being sad with you and I like being, you know, whatever it is with you, I'm choosing you over and over and over a fucking game. That's why it's such a like commitment and such a, I, honestly, it's a very ridiculous thing that that we believe in to be honest Ooh. but that, especially those of us that 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 like have been conditioned that you're gonna find your one person and it's gonna be like that but it's also why people it feels so fucking good people get up and try it again 
Yes, again, they, they find I'm gonna find a new person. Don't get back on the fucking apps. I want to do it again. Some people got six P partners. They I'm trying to pick all six of you niggas every day. Like it's that feeling is what makes the euphoria part of love good. That's what makes the um consoling part of love good. The affirmation part of love good is that I'm picking you and you're picking me. And that is the height of it. That is the what we aspire to, but not everyone reaches every day. But you aspire to that shit. And you don't get to feel that with control. Mm-mm. Control is I'm making you pick me. Mm-hmm. Control is I'm rigging this playing field. So you have you're left with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like I'm the I'm the last toy in the box, bitch. We playing together. You know, like that's the feeling that I think people are giving or they're they're being taught to give people and and it's and it's out of a fear of being hurt when i was in college uh, i've told the story before but it was like a, a spring break weekend i want to say maybe my freshman year or my sophomore year or something but this guy i knew he he was fucking so many women in the dorm i was just like oh that dude's player like i just he's hollering at every chick now it turns out that He's a he's a college freshman. He was actually like bagging a lot of high school chicks, which I'm assuming was legal. I don't know. I'm not getting it. I'm not accusing him of any criminal things. I'm just right. saying like mm-hmm. he was like 18 and these girls, let's say these girls are 17, but he was trying to be like that that college freshman that's the man around the high school chicks. What whatever. I'm I'm literally not that's not the part I'm judging. But he did this so much, I just thought he was that dude. I was like, okay, I guess he just had sex with a lot of girls, you know, and uh, and and also some of them, I'm sure, were also college girls too. He just he had sex with a lot of chicks. That's all I knew. And I, we weren't really friends or cool or anything. I just knew him, and he had a big flashy red car that was a sports car, even though he's a high, a college freshman. Which I don't know how the fuck he paid for that. Uh, actually, I do know he couldn't pay for it. Uh, so <laughs> so we're on we're on spring break, and I'm staying at the school rather than going home this spring break. And he come, and me and him are like one of the only two in the like dorm. We had to like move our stuff into like a special dorm if we were gonna stay, blah, blah, blah. And so he comes and uh over to my dorm room and he's like, Man, you know, are you cause I'm in there playing Dreamcast and he's like, uh, shout out to Dreamcast. And he's like, um, hey man, what you what how what do you do? I said, I mean, you see what I do. I play basketball every day, and then I play video games, and I do my fucking work. And I hang out with my girl, you know? And he was like, and I think this must have been freshman year, because maybe you weren't there yet. And he was like, uh, yeah, man, but like, I don't never see you like trying to holler at no girls or nothing like that. I'm like, well, you know, I got a girl. She's just not here right now or whatever. But, you know, it's like, I'm cool. I see her whenever I drive home to Charlotte. And he was like, uh, yeah, man, but, like, I got a girl, but, like, she's an a and And I'm like, fuck, you got a girl? All you do is just pound cheeks all day. It's just. <laughs> That's all you do. It's just, just, just didn't make it like a, a cheat, just a factory. A pound cheesecakes factory, okay? Um, and so he was like, uh, yeah, man, but, you know, I got my girl, and I'm just saying, like, I still be messing with girls, but you don't, like, I love I love my girl, you know? I was like, yeah, because he said, how come you don't cheat or whatever? I was like, because I love my girl. And he's like, I mean, I love my girl, too. I was like, okay, so. Uh, right. Okay. I don't I don't know what to tell you. And to me, to love somebody means I can't be fucking a bunch of girls that aren't them and keeping that as a secret from them to me. But that's just me. Maybe I'm uptight. And, <laughs> and so <laughs> he um he tells me about how he uh was um like he he was just like, man, I could never really do that because he goes, What if she's cheating on you? And I said, I mean I would hope that she's not, but I can't control that. Yes, because people used to ask me that too. I'm like, I have no control over that, and I will deal with that when we get there. Yeah, I said I can't control that. Right. And and I'm not gonna live in that fear. It's not possible to control that. Um, even if you think think you could, but what what I realized at that moment was that he was cheating. 
because if he sabotages his own relationship, at least it's a self-sabotage, which is a form of control. I controlled what happened because I made the choice to fuck it up. Also, if she is cheating, I, he thinks there'll be an emotional consolation prize of, well, I was cheating the whole time too. Ha, 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 I win. It is yes. power. It is power still for me. And now in that case, he's not necessarily controlling her mm-hmm. that I knew of. I mean, I don't know their private life, but he's controlling his own actions that are sabotaging the relationship to some extent. That making him and it's all to assuage his anxiety of I don't want to look like a fool when this doesn't work out. And I, if I've been cheating, I haven't been the fool the whole time because hey, at least I was getting mine. You know, oh, she was cheating on me. Well, ha ha ha, jokes on you. Me too. Mm-hmm. He didn't it. see it as just a demerit or deduction to the value of the relationship. No matter what, he only saw it as when it does fail. Or if it does fail, at least I was always shitty and I never really put in enough effort you know? yeah i know everybody jokes on that song everybody plays the fool but it happens to everybody and for some people <laughs> once they've been a fool they make a promise to themselves literally at that moment right. it will never happen again and they do shit like that where they don't commit they don't have any long-term relationships they're like no this right here will never happen again and they just roll through life like that right. and when you meet people like that you go hey dog like you got a lot of shit and happening he, and he did tell me some story of because i asked him like why do you say that you know where's that coming from has she done things that made he's like no but you know he just feels that way and we eventually got down to him and this used to happen to me a lot this this is one of the reasons i'm uh i don't like a lot of discussions in general because most people when they talk to me they you know we end up talking to me about some deep shit but mm-hmm. he ended up telling me like he got cheated on when he was in high school by this girl and da 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 and so he's using that as an excuse obviously now it's not it's not as bad as you like 38 year old niggas saying this shit because he was like 18 at the time or some shit right. so like high school for him was like two weeks ago or whatever the fuck but the point being like he was saying like he this this thing fucked him up so bad that he'll never let it happen again but i'm like so then you're just gonna do it to this other innocent person first yeah, the pain that was inflicted on you possibly relationship and all that stuff and i don't do advice right so i didn't tell him what to do honestly god i and i'm like because it's not really about me he made his bad decision already and eventually that shit's gonna either come out or not but you know he wouldn't he was not the first or the last dude I knew that cheated on a girl and, and wanted to talk to me about the shit for some reason to know ah! if there was like some secret that was going to rub off from me that was going to make them a faithful person. I, oh, I don't God, know them. All your personal choices. Everybody different and you know whatever. Um, And so I was like uh, but that all reminds me of this kind of idea of what is Jonah Hill trying to avoid? What is that uh Saruna's Jackson brother trying to avoid. Uh they're all trying to avoid this idea of being hurt. Yeah, that's what it all boils down. And to. it looks like this. And it's it is pathetic and it is whack and it's terrible and it's and it's somewhat relatable. I, and I don't even care what gender you are. People have insecurities unless you're like perfect or lying. And you just had to work on them yourself. And we all have triggers too. We all have, like, we're human. We have our own past and all these traumas and stuff. So I know that people can identify with the idea of being wrong, but understanding, like, yeah, that's wrong. But I felt, I felt that way before, but that is wrong. You know, it's like, it's like how you should never go through your partner's phone, but somebody's out here has gone through a phone and then went right, like, Got back in their right mind. I was like, oh my God, I'm, I was fucking tripping. I, that was wrong. I should not be going through your fucking phone. What was I thinking? You know, people may have felt that before and they may have been like, I didn't go through the phone, but I felt like going to this motherfucking phone or whatever. P, like, whatever examples you're talking about, I think that's a big part of this thing is people feeling like um, the, the, the insecurities that match up with these dudes. The ones who are defending these dudes, that's why their insecurities match up. It's like, I too feel a way when my woman is dancing and looking good and 
and and it's not with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can relate. You know, <laughs> people be liking my girl Instagram pics too much. You know, like it was yes, that. Yes, you could feel that vibe coming off of the like Jonah got a point, motherfuckers, and you just you know, and of course there's just the random incel ass people <laughs> that right. You know, that always end up on that side somehow. Ha ha ha. I'm always on the side of fucking the the dudes being uh being accused of being abusive, just somehow. I'm always on that side. Um so yeah, I I just wanted to talk about that because I feel like everybody's been talking about that on social media. And uh we had we hadn't had a chance yet. No, we hadn't had a chance. And something that I uh and 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 this is just my experience, something I realized about love. And relationships and things like that, uh, with the controlling and things like that. I think a lot of people try to imitate and recreate the feelings of when they first were in love. Mm. And so they try to control those feelings to make it always appear like we're quote unquote have that first in love. When you are first in love, you get like a euphoria, is you know, chemical, is I can't keep my hands off of you and all that type of stuff. But particularly if you're in a relationship with person or people or however it is, as time goes on, you still love somebody, but it's just not as intense. Mm -hmm. And I think once you go through the feeling that that love isn't that intense, overpowering, oh my God, type of feeling, a lot of people lose interest. A lot of people think something's wrong. A lot of people think it's dysfunction, but it's not. It's just we have been together for such a long time that now instead of intense, our love needs to go deep. Mm -hmm. And this is where people miss that point. They try to recreate that euphoria. And in, in my personal opinion, since we talk about relationships, this is why people fight, fuss, fuss, fuck, fight, fuss, fuck. Because mm -hmm. they consistently want to imitate that high that they get when they were first in love. That make up sex and all that stuff, starting fights on purpose and all mm -hmm. those types of things. This is just my feeling on outside looking in. But I realized after a while, your loves get deeper. And when I mean deeper, it's, A, now I'm here with you when your mama died. Now I'm here with you when your brother died. Now I'm here with you when you're sick. Like, 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 like. I know, I know, okay, it's a joke. I'm just making it oh, Okay, no problem. But, you know, and, 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 and that's a deep thing. Or when you have financial troubles or whatever. Whatever the case may be, yeah, and that's not as sexy and hot and fun mm -hmm. as high as high pic picture and all that stuff, right? You guess what? That's the shit people don't post on Instagram. Right. That's the shit you can't, you know, put in 140 characters and shit like that. I think also too, Instagram, social media, it's all content. Yes. So like a lot of this stuff is us looking at content and it making more content. So our takes on the stuff, like I saw this one trending too. This is light skin Keisha talking to her boyfriend. And I some type of, that's her name. She's a rapper. Oh, I didn't make that up. My bad. Um, and there's a um and there's a uh podcast, Mike. So you know it's gonna be some gender gender oh, wars. Oh shit, podcast Mike alert. But it's they're talking about cheating. Go for what? We ain't gonna talk about it. Go for what? No, let's talk about it. Put it out on the table. You're not gonna leave me if I cheat on you. You're stupid. You're not, you you're not leaving. You not leaving you're me if stupid. I cheat on you. You're not. You're stupid. You're crazy. I've been with you so long. Okay. Try it. Try it. We'll see. You're not leaving me if I cheat on you. You're crazy. You want to cheat on me? You're not leaving Do me. Do you want to cheat on me? I don't want to cheat on you, but you're not leaving me if I cheat on you. You're crazy. And the thing about it is... I don't spend too much money. For I don't give a fuck. That's your, that's your problem. Because guess what? I'm not even nah. going... Let me tell you something. You cheat, I'm not even finna be on no... Rah, rah, da, 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 da. I'm going to be so player. I'm, I'm gonna be so player about this shit. I swear, like I'm not, not even gonna be like, motherfucker. I'm not doing none of that crazy bitch shit. I'm going to live. So you know, that was another one that went viral yeah, on Sunday this morning. Is definitely gender war type. Yeah, yeah. nobody had anything to do Sunday morning, so you know. Sunday. I, I told morning. you that's why sometimes you ask me about shit. I'll be like, when it happened Sunday morning, you check yeah. that. You be like, yep. I be like, yeah, because that's nothing else to do. Sal. Sunday morning. That's what we're doing. Um, on the Lord's day, on Prime Day. The day we church. all, the day we all should re be respecting, cause he died for our sins and he rose again. And just he for rose you. again. He passed the matrix of leadership on. Ah! Hallelujah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> he passed it on to the usurper, uh, uh, Ultra Magnus. 
But he was not the chosen one. Mm-mm, it was Hot Rod. <laughs> but he couldn't. He couldn't become hot. He couldn't just do it as Hot Rod. He had to grow up. He had to do what he had to mature like these men in these relationships. And what did he do? He unlocked the cage of the Matrix, and he he saved the universe from Unicron so that we all would know <laughs> eternal life. Optimus is the reason for the season, okay? But y'all went and turned it into a consumerist holiday. You done forgot the lessons we were supposed to learn. You on there trying to get new AirPods for $50 off, but you not worried about your eternal spark? I don't think so. Not in our watch, not in this house. Here we remember Optimus Prime until all are one. I'm sorry to get on that tangent, but that just that hit my spirit. Okay, you had to let us I need. Know. I had to say something. I had to drop a word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I forget where I was at. Me, me, but me too. we had to. We had to tell you. You know, come on. We if Hot Rod could get a second chance, can I get? A, can I get an amen? Can I get an energon cube? Energon somebody, cube. Somebody got an energon cube out there. <laughs> If if Hot Put Rock could, cubes in the L. if Hot Rock could get a second chance, anybody can. Then anybody could get a second chance. I'm talking even Galvatron could have got a second. Galvatron was a second chance, <laughs> but they don't. But you don't hear me though. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> Let me go ahead and roll out. Let me transform and roll out to the next section because this is getting it's getting a little too. Woo. I'm preaching on today. I <laughs> get a little bit too much for them. Okay. We talking about controls and 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 relationships. I boy hit the the great the great spark in the sky hit me. Okay, I'm about to take y'all to Cybertron. So I'm about to take y'all to Cybertron today, boy. Okay, woo. Don't give me don't give me the talking. Okay, all right. But um, yeah. My point being, man, uh, all these niggas just need a little bit of therapy. And uh, yeah, I'm and, and and this is not to say these people couldn't be abusive. This is not. I don't know is my point. Same thing happened when y'all said Cardi B getting cheated on was emotional abuse, and then celebrated her cheating on Offset. Possibly, it, it like it's a lot of picking sides going on. It's a lot of jumping and flopping and shit happening right now, and it don't really make a lot of sense necessarily. It's not it, like unless you just look at it as like I'm just supporting the women. I'm just supporting the men. But I think at the at the core, the thing that we don't talk about is the insecurity, is the fear that is relatable. How you cope with that fear, how you live with the vulnerability, that's where the happiness is. That's where the real work is. There's no amount of rules you can put on another person that's going to truly make you feel like you can trust them. Because when you measure somebody's value by how well they follow your instructions, they're no longer free. Nope. You know what I mean? Like when when that is the the worth of a person, that's no longer free. When it's all about control, they're no longer free. And who the fuck? I, didn't you get with them because you like the way free looked? <laughs> you know what I mean? The way like it the looked way on them. Freedom looked. Ain't that what you like? You know, I, it's I don't know, man. You gotta let people be themselves, and if and at your best, hopefully elevate them to to where they want to go as themselves and. See new heights together. I just, I don't know, man. I, I know I'm a hippie, but I believe in that kind of love. I think that's the most empowering thing. And I'm not even, like I said, it's not just romantic. I mean, just even as a friend, dog, mm-hmm. like nothing I'm saying couldn't also be applied to a friendship. Like, I, 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 this is a long rambling episode, but you know, another thing I saw that got on my motherfucking nerves, I saw somebody say, like, normalize when someone is tell, talking to you about a situation they experienced that you don't then reference a similar situation that you went through. And I said, normalize, never the fuck calling me, nigga. This ain't no motherfucking monologue, bitch. We friends. And and it goes for you, too. If anything, I hope you do have something to help. I, I hope I'm not complaining to you and you didn't, you ain't, I'm just sounding crazy to you. Like, I don't know what this nigga talking about. I, I've never experienced this in my life. Uh, But yeah, good luck with that, buddy. I hope you got it off your chest. I'm not calling you to do a one-way screed. This isn't a therapy session. I'm not trying to call you. But that's and how then, some people treat friendship. Yeah. And only, and, 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 it's not transactional. Yes, you don't owe me anything. And I had to learn that. Like, 
Like one thing I had to learn and one reason why I'm not going to lie, my standards for friendship is extremely, extremely high because there are things that when we're in a friendship that I will and will not put up with. If I have a friend, we need to be able to call each other and to be able to talk to each other, go back and forth with each other and be able to be ourselves around each other and realize that uh, when you call me, it's not a monologue. And and I should be able to talk to you and say things to you that you may not even agree with, but it's not the quote unquote end of the relationship you, and the friendship. When you say that, you sound so transactional. Right. You sound like you're keeping a tally somewhere. And I'm not saying you can't keep a tally, but let me tell you something. If you call my phone and you keeping a tally, we're not friends. And it's not me that needs to accept that it's you. Because I don't do that. Mm -mm. You see what I'm saying? If my homie, if if we talk once a year, we talk once a day, whatever the fuck it is, the ledger is always zero. Nobody owe nobody shit. Yes, I I have a a girlfriend, and we have been friends over 20-something years. I've known her since I've been in my 20s. And I may sometimes talk to her maybe once or twice a year. I seen her earlier this was earlier this year or maybe last year, I think this year. And that this was the first time I had seen her in about mm, possibly 10 years, like like physically seen her. But every time we talk, it's like we never left. Anytime we text, it's like we never left. Like like I, if if you need somebody to be up your ass all the time talking to you, I'm not that type of friend. And I'm and like maybe there's some extreme of this where right. people have experienced that. But listen to what the fuck I said. I didn't say the person was like, you know, hey, don't try to make say something that's worse than what I went through or whatever. They were basically like, shut the fuck up when I'm talking. Don't right. don't say anything of, from your personal experience back to me. What the fuck is that? That's not a friendship. Get a diary. Go to a get a podcast. Get a one sided podcast with no guests and just you the host. That's not what you. What the fuck do it matter that I'm on the phone being the one that you just talking endlessly to, and I just got to sit there and be like, well, I better not say, if you know, I lost my job before too, and I can I understand how you go what you're going through and it's been like that. I better not say that because God knows that's the worst fucking thing you can say to this person. That is so fucking weird to me. Right. And it makes to me, I feel like that's the person that's the asshole. You know what I mean? They, They don't they don't see it like that, but it is because my thing is as a friend, I'm considerate of life. People have kids, people have things to do, people have careers, people they do all types of things. And it's okay if I'm not, quote unquote, the top priority. But you know what that's not going to change? Our friendship and our love for each other. But like you said, because so many people get tallies. So many people, you didn't call me. You didn't check on me. It's me, 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 me. You know, and also I think for me, you know, your childhood impacts your adulthood. All that, and, yeah. And as a kid, my a lot of my relatives treated me like that. And so for me, that's a flat fucking turnoff. Like well, that. you know what else though? We've done 2,700 episodes in front of the paywall, probably 2,000 behind the paywall, right? Mm-hmm. God knows how many guest appearances we've been on other podcasts, all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we've never once been on this show and been like, now, normalize, I say something and then you don't say shit. Oh no, Karen, I was just telling that story because I felt a way. I didn't want you to talk about how you feel. That's that's crazy. That's you, ridiculous. Now, why are you making it about you? That's like, and th- once again, that's a friendship. And it's going back to full circle what I was saying. That's a power thing. That's control. Mm-hmm. That's not, that's not loving free. That's not promoting someone's freedom with your love. That's not being their safety net is hey I, I you this is your bad report card because you had something to say when i told you what i was experiencing why do we need that level of control you know you have to embrace the freedom it like there's stuff that there's stuff in every relationship where you're tolerating 
someone because they're gonna because they're not you. They're making choices that are not your choices all the time. It could be something as as little as you're going to go park and there's a parking space. <laughs> And you see the parking space <laughs> right there on your left. Okay, Siri done told you to park over there. The lights are shining. Yeah. You're looking at the space. You turned your signal on to make a left into the space. And then the person next to you could point and go, there goes the parking space. And, and you go, wait, there's a parking space. That's what I'm doing. I'm parking in the parking space. You saw me make all the parking actions. <laughs> That would be that I was literally would, parking in take you there. not just any space, but that particular space that we both see. We both wear glasses. We both <laughs> we both see the space with all eight of our eyes right now. All eight of them. We know we're going here to eat. Why, why would I park further away when I could park next to the door? We both want to take our asses in there and eat some sushi. But something as little as that. Right? You know, could just be about controlling someone. Yeah, so and I know this might sound silly. Something, <laughs> something as uh, uh, we you talk about your spouse. Something as little as I'm short, and so sometimes shit is high. You know what I do? I get my ass. I get something to get it down. You know, I can't reach it. I'm five foot two. You higher than me. But what I don't do is make a big ass scene about it. Mm-hmm. That's why I got a step ladder. So I get my ass up there, get the shit myself. Right. And that's why we bought that. Because it's about it's about elevating the person and wanting them to be free. Free enough to point at that parking space. Yes! That you both see. And act like you stupid. Like you <laughs> like you somehow went parking space, specifically parking space blind. Like you can see everything else to get to the restaurant. <laughs> but you can't see this big ass empty parking space. And you just need a little help. And they could just control you just a little bit and say, right there, just robot. Okay, just do what I want, just a little bit. And then when you make a joke like, uh, duh, I see the parking space, <laughs> they might come back two in the morning while you playing video games, come out the bedroom and go, Did I, did I get on your nerves when I asked you about the parking <laughs> I was space? I'm trying to process that shit. <laughs> and of course, they got on your nerves and asked about the parking space, but not in a Kiki Palmer's husband way, in a Ha ha ha, that, that was funny way. And then you say, no, you didn't get on my nerves because you have to lie because they're feeling vulnerable. So you say, no, you didn't get on my nerves at all about that parking space. It's totally fine. But you're telling the truth when you say, it was funny to me. It was hilarious. You know, it, it didn't, <laughs> everyone's okay. I said, are you okay? You know, maybe that's hypothetically in this situation. You say, are you okay? Because I want you to know I love you and I choose you every day. And it's just a fucking parking space, and I had already forgotten about it. No one, it really didn't care other than just, it was very funny. <laughs> yes! I was stuck in, and that's the thing about people. You get stuck in your own head. And it's one of those things, because we talked, I was like, you know what? I'm going to talk to him about it. <laughs> and I know that that's Because she new- didn't, she didn't quote tweet me no. on Twitter and say, it's a parking space right over there, dummy. You missed it. She didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> It was private. She came out of the bedroom in the middle of the night. I was playing Guardians of the Galaxy. She said, oh, were, you really, are you, were you really upset about the parking space? And I said, of course not. Because <laughs> that would have made me a fucking psychopath, by the way, if it was two in the morning I was brooding over a parking space. But the point being, she needed to feel like that was okay at that moment. And I said, it is okay. It's fine. Don't worry about the parking space. Please go back to bed, baby. It's, it's not a. It's not. This is not a big deal. No one's mad at you, and uh, you know the ah! people have trauma from childhood and stuff. They got yeah, nothing to do with I, you. Yeah, I do. Yeah. But their insecurities are their insecurities, mm-hmm. and I, and that is valid, even if it is a man's insecurity. Sometimes it when when you love somebody and it's worth it, and they've made you happy a certain way, maybe you might take some actions to address their insecurities. And, and and people on the outside don't really need to be privy to that situation because they see it as a power struggle and they think you just gave up some power. Yes. And they think that, you know, but but if sometimes it is, you know, there's people like they text when they get to work, but they know they don't text when they get to work, just anybody, but Mm-mm. okay, this motherfucker worries about my safety and I love them and I do. it takes one second mm-hmm. 
to make them not feel concerned for my safety. Yeah. And when I get there, when I get ready to head home, right? Mm -hmm. But if I was single, I would nobody know I was at work. They know I was at work when I tweeted funny things about my coworkers. They wouldn't be checking every morning, right? But we might do something little like that because we love somebody. We want their insecurities to be it because it's a short, quick thing to to sell, put some solve on that. Let's do that. Yeah. And, hold on one second. And to help with those insecurities. Yeah. You might want to make them feel secure again because they've shown you what they love. Empty parking spaces. <laughs> they love that shit. They love it so much. They want to make sure you see every one of them when you Air go parking. parking space. Even now though they make you drive, joke. they make you drive the whole way. Of course so you're driving. Maybe when they're falling Misogyny. Asleep, maybe when they fell asleep on the couch. Patriarchy. They fell asleep on the couch again, and you got to come get them to get, say, hey, you fell asleep on the couch, watch TV, come on, get to bed. Mm -hmm. Maybe they sleepy as hell, and they're not paying no attention. you helping them walk to the bedroom, and you say, hey, hey, stop, stop. I know you're sleepy, but I got to show you something that's important. They say, hey, what's what's so important? It's, it's late at night, and I just want to go back to sleep and say, no, come here. I got to show you something. You take them to the bathroom and you open up the windows and you look out the blinds and you point in the parking lot and you go, hey, there's a parking space. <laughs> and you both just laugh real hard at three in the morning and wake up your neighbors. <laughs> because sometimes the relationship is, is that's what it is. It's not that, always. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly what it is. And I'm not, and, and, and people think this might sound like a, it's a small thing uh, for me. Uh, I like Roger waking me up off the chair. Because one thing about him being in New York, bitch, sometimes I slept there all night long and got mad. <laughs> but, you know, him, he, he wakes my ass up and be like, you know when it's time to go to bed. But guess what? If you ain't got that person just, just up half of the night and be like, well, I'm going to bed. I'm not going to leave you in there on the couch. Guess what you're going to wake up tomorrow morning right there on that damn couch? I'm just saying. And I, and I like him waking me up. <laughs> But, uh, you know, some people would be mad about waking you up. Like, I got to come wake you up every night. Some people would That's be mad. True. But, you know, some love sometimes is that thing of, like, if it'll if it's easier for you, then, it, then I'll make it happen. And I'll come get you off the couch. You don't have to sleep in here by yourself or whatever. And that's the thing. You make that. It, the internet, you could take something that small and the internet will be fighting about it based on which gender did which for who. Right, because the, everything to them is a game that you gotta win. It's like, oh, so you gotta get up out of your sleep and get this person to come to why they don't just get in the bed every night. You know, you gotta do that mm -hmm. shit as opposed to being like, well, y'all are probably you have some version of this in your relationship, some version, and you just the difference is you don't share it, and that's you know, and I think the insecurities of people being put on display is it can be educational, but mostly it's divisive. Mostly it's just people fodder for entertainment but i think if you're listening to this and you can relate i would suggest that you address your insecurities but you also address internally in your relationship what what do you want to ease what what are you accepting from another person right. you know if you need me to text you every day when i get home am i like if that's a deal breaker thing for me then it's a deal breaker but there's a lot of us texting somebody when we get home because it's just like all right if that make your life better that just make your life better and I, and and that's fine. I don't want to win. I don't want to fight on the principle of it. It doesn't matter to me. It's a small thing and it makes you happy. Yes, and also other people's problems and insecurities try to affect you cuz I remember uh at my old job, I even had a coworker. They were like, "You text your husband every day when you get here that like something's wrong with." It. I was like, "Yes." And 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 uh cuz they said it like if something was wrong mm -hmm. with it. I said, "Yes." I say because you know what? I'm getting a car wreck within the 10 minutes and 15 minutes I'm up the road. And if they don't hear from me, that motherfucker gonna come looking for me. Yeah, and it could be the trauma, too, of like having the opposite effect where they had someone that was trying to control them. Agreed. Or they had someone that was trying to track them. Or somebody thought they were cheating or something. So, like, their traumas inform yeah. their view of that thing. And, I, and once again, it's the dude asking me why I don't cheat or whatever, where it's just like, Oh, you, this is a coping mechanism you have because of the fear of being made to be a fool. But I, like I said, I told him at that time, I said, I have no defense. 
I would just be a fool. Right. And I said the worst thing for her is that she would have lost the person that truly wanted the best for her and was supportive and all that shit. But that would have been her choice, and I don't get to control that. And I, I can't be protected from that if I'm four feet down. If I'm all the way in, then I have to be all the way in. And all the way in means sometimes you look bad. And I think so much of what we have now, especially, people just don't want to look bad. That's why you always see shit like if someone gets cheated on, the idea that they would cheat back. That's a, I want the public to see me win. That's not, that's not a, that, that is in no way actually about peace or happiness or help or healing. It's not about that at all. It's about a public scoreboard and people live for that public scoreboard and you, you end up with these situations. Like I was, I'm a, I don't know these people, but it's a little interesting to see how Kiki's playing it because if they're truly going to like not be together anymore, because partially because the public that supports her is egging this on it'll be interesting to see how much of that was really like internally like just her by herself being like i gotta drop this guy this is another thing in a slate of things or how much was just like oh it looks bad for me to be on this with this guy on the internet because i know there's been other celebrities that had men that were problematic and they either dated them secretly for a while or they would date them like after or, or they would have to like break up to keep the public off their ass and it's always interesting to see what happens with that it, it it is and you know it's it's one of those things to where like you say when you look at it everybody in a relationship regardless of how many people are in a relationship do some form of compromising they do some form of looking like a fool and it doesn't even have to be to these to the, yeah. to the extent of cheating, but there are things that you do that's corny. There are things that you do not trying to find that's not politically correct. Yeah. There are things that that, that you do that, that that falls into particularly straight misogyny and right. patriarchy and shit like that. Because it's, it's, it's it might be small, but there are things that I do that I just like Roger doing for me. Like I like Roger opening up the door for me. Like that is one of my things. I walk up to the door and I'll stop and he'll open the door for me. He don't have to do that. It's just one thing that I, I yeah, personally right. like for and I enjoy him doing that. Right. Like Roger, I enjoy and I've Roger's seen, driving for me, but I just like that. And every once in a while, like I'll see because there's other people that value other things. There's women that are like, I could get the door myself. There's women that are like, I'll drive myself. I want the freedom to pick and be the one that makes the choices while I'm driving. There, it's just their different setup and the people they get with and the decisions they make, if you get with anybody, whatever. But, like, that that's for them. And I think that's what's missing from the whole conversation is, like, look, they could work this out and it could just be a mistake he made at 28 and that's the father of her kid and they, right. whatever, the, everything time else. Time forgives relationships. Everything else could have been fine until this moment and they just having a very public, dumb moment. Um, also like low key Kiki could kind of be on some of the same like dumb stuff just because I remember when y'all people used to drag her all the time because she would say something dumb on Twitter and it's just she got either better PR or she learned to stop tweeting that kind of shit because now everybody loves her but they mostly love her symbolically you know it's a lot of like we go up for her not not like oh this brilliant point she made this morning it's a lot more just like man we just like her um so you got that kind of stuff too, where uh, uh, th- these people could be together, these people could work it out, these people could break up. These I don't know, you know, these people could be fine, you know. And that Jonah Hill thing, especially, yeah, it is weird that woman, because uh, that's the other thing. I would say with the Jonah Hill thing, the woman who was his ex, there's not necessarily clean hands there, but because people want to make everything black and white, they've been arguing as if you if you were to say like, yo, it's kind of weird she did this now, and it's especially weird that she's made it so that if he addresses it in public, she's going to act like he's intimidating or doing something to him. This is weird, right? And if you say that, people are like, so you trying to say it's okay to abuse people and shit? So a lot of this shit is weird. People are reacting in the interest of parties that aren't exactly unbiased. Um, and people are cherry picking stuff like a Facebook meme that's triggering them based on their histories. Um, but we got to get out of here, guys. We got some parking spaces we got to go look at. 
I heard it's some empty parking spaces at Walmart that I'm, Karen is dying to see. I'm dying to point them out to you. She can't, you know, she gotta let <laughs> me know. Cause you know how it is. Yeah, um, and I and I and I got some plates. I'm dying to put out an order and put them too low. So Roger has to turn around and put them back up high. Well, I can't reach him again. I never complain about this. I just do them, guys. <laughs> I just, I just do it. Though. I don't even know where that came from. That's I put the place wherever you want to put them, but you know. No, because I because you like them in a certain. Well, I be trying to help, so I just be oh, I tell I tell you, counter. yeah, leave them on the counter. I put them up there yeah. for you. And Roger, tell me that, but I'm like, I want to be just, helpful. Think about this. I'm saying if you do the dishes and you can't reach the higher part of the cabinet, you can just leave the stuff on the counter where you can reach. Yes, and I'll just put them in the cabinet in the right place when I get time. Which is almost always immediately, by the way. It's never just sitting out there for days. <laughs> and instead, regardless of me saying this a million times, I'll be trying to be helpful. Karen will put the stuff in the cabinet in the wrong place, which is even worse than leaving it on the counter. <laughs> because if it's in the wrong place, I now have to move it from the wrong place to put it to the right place as opposed to just having put it one time, moving it one time, Straight to the right place every time. <laughs> and I don't know where that trauma comes from. I don't know, you know, but I haven't but, figured it. It's come from somewhere. I guarantee you something with my mama. But what <laughs> does what doesn't happen is I don't quote tweet her and be like, You are you a wife. You because I it's not about controlling her and how you, I you how aunt. I, it's not <laughs> it's not how I look. It's not about how I look controlling her that's that puts the value in the situation. <laughs> it's not that's it's okay to it's just it'll be all right. It's just between us an internal battle that will go on to the end of time. Probably will. We're this, gonna be old still doing that shit. <laughs> why not leave the plate on the counter so that we don't have to move it twice? And that is <laughs> everything looks nice and neat in the right places all the time. And when we go to get something, it's always where it's supposed to be. Yes. As opposed to being different random places in the house that is not supposed to be, because those are the only places them. that you can reach, and you think it would really be helpful if you don't do the cooking around here. So <laughs> if I'm doing all the cooking, it would behoove me to have things in the places I want them to be, Agreed. so that when I need a bowl to stir something, it's in the place where bowls are. Yeah. When I need the thing, the whisk, it's in the place where the whisk are. It just seems like to <laughs> it would me be more helpful. I'm making I, you're making your job harder, but that's an insecurity that came from somewhere, and I'm just the person that loves you enough to be like, "That's fine. We'll just Thank figure you. it out every time." You know, <laughs> so I choose you every day. Same, I choose you every day. All right, we'll talk to y'all later. Until then, I love you. I love you too. Mwah. But only on the condition that you stop posting all them thirst pictures, okay, Karen? Um, <laughs> I love you, but just so much. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Peace.